In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about stonefly nymphs and some things to keep in mind when both tying and fishing patterns that imitate these insects. Stoneflies thrive in clean, well-oxygenated water. You will find the healthiest populations of stoneflies in streams that stay relatively cool throughout the summer and that contain fast water with plenty of opportunity for oxygen to be put in the water. Stoneflies live on the bottom of rocks. The easiest way to find them is to find their habitat and then go digging around on the bottom until you find one on the bottom of a rock. Stonefly populations can vary dramatically, even on geographically close streams or rivers. Take this guy for example. He has almost a tan or a skin tone hue to him. If you tie your own flies, I highly recommend taking pictures of insects that you find or better, taking specimens home so that you can tie as close a match as possible. If you don't tie, and you just buy your flies at a shop, that's fine too. There are plenty of local shops that can point you in the right direction. If you would like to learn a simple method for preserving insects you find on the stream, there will be a link at the end of this video. As you can see here, stoneflies are clingers. They have little hooks on their feet that help them grip onto the bottoms of rocks. This allows them to stay in very fast water. It never ceases to amaze me just how fast of water these guys can live in. The most distinct features on the stonefly nymph are probably the position and size of the legs, the tail, and the antenna. These are all features that makes patterns such as the Pat's rubber legs so efficient. Other predominant characteristics include the segmentation towards the tail, these plates that sit up above the legs, and gills that are underneath the legs. I'll show these better on another fly. The gills on lighter flies tend to blend in really well with the underbelly and the legs. The gills on darker flies, however, can stand out quite a bit. Sometimes when I'm tying flies for certain places that are really dark, I'll accentuate the gills on the belly. As you can see here, this fly is nearly black. However, the gills on the belly are almost a light tan color. This sticks out really well, especially when underwater. When stoneflies feel threatened, they often curl up. To imitate this, simply tie your pattern on a curved shank hook, which incidentally will also give you a bigger hook gap. Unlike mayflies or caddis, stoneflies have a multi-year lifespan, and you can often find the same species, but different sizes living right next to each other. Often you can get away with fishing bigger sizes in the spring, and even larger sizes a few weeks before stoneflies will hatch. And in the fall, you'll usually want to fish a little bit smaller to imitate the large numbers of smaller bugs in the water. For bigger sizes, I usually like to stick with a Pat's rubber leg or a Kaufman stonefly. And for medium to smaller bugs, you can usually get away with a hare's ear or even a really large pheasant tail nymph. Stoneflies can't swim, and they will often curl up and allow themselves to float around until they end up on the bottom. They will tumble around on the bottom until they feel like they're in a position where they can scramble to shelter. As he spins over, try to pay attention to how well his gills stand out against his dark body. Our eyes pick it out pretty well, but I imagine that highly evolved trout eyes pick it out even better. Notice also how this guy dropped pretty quickly to the bottom and how he stays there. Like I said, stoneflies can't swim. Their bodies are inherently pretty dense. And since stoneflies like to live in pretty fast water, it's a really good idea to tie your flies pretty heavy. I usually use lead or lead-free wire in the core to make a nice heavy body. But using split shot can also be an effective method. Well, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and share it with your friends if you think they'd like it too. Also, if you'd like to learn how I preserve my aquatic insects, then go ahead and click on the link on the bottom left hand corner of the screen. And if you'd like to learn how to incorporate those light colored gills into your Pat's rubber legs, then go ahead and click on the link in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Have a good one and tight lines.